Hello, and thank you for joining our video on understanding and reducing the risk of H5N1 avian influenza in petting zoos. Avian influenza, and specifically the H5N1 strain, has infected a variety of birds and mammals. In this video, we will present an overview of how to manage H5N1 avian influenza in animals commonly exhibited in petting zoos and traveling exhibits. We'll focus on recognizing the common signs of H5N1 infection, the role of the attending veterinarian to prevent, detect, and respond to H5N1, and how to use biosecurity practices to protect animals and people in petting zoos. H5N1, also referred to as avian flu, is caused by an avian influenza A virus. H5N1 and other strains of avian influenza are deadly to domestic poultry such as chickens and turkeys and can infect a number of other bird species. While a number of mammals are susceptible to avian flu, previously unreported infections in dairy cattle have recently been identified. Finally, domestic cats are susceptible to avian flu and can be infected through direct contact with or consumption of infected birds or by drinking unpasteurized milk from infected dairy cattle. Wild migratory birds typically serve as the initial source of virus for other birds and mammals. In wild birds and poultry, the virus is spread through saliva, nasal secretions, and feces. Mammals and other birds are infected through direct contact with infected wild birds or poultry, or indirectly through shared pasture or living spaces, contaminated food or water sources, or by catching or eating infected birds or poultry. Movement of infected animals from one place to another can further spread the virus. Milk from infected dairy cattle contains high levels of the virus and unpasteurized milk from infected dairy cows and contaminated milking equipment can be sources of avian flu and its spread. The virus is killed by heat and pasteurization and pasteurized milk is safe for human and animal consumption. Finally, avian flu viruses, like all influenza viruses, are spread through close contact. People contacting infected animals are at higher risk of becoming infected with avian flu. Settings where people from different places come together and have close contact with animals, such as petting zoos, can be a source of spread of avian flu between humans and animals. It's important to be familiar with and to be able to recognize the signs of avian flu in your petting zoo animals and domestic cats that may visit or live in the petting zoo area. Some of the clinical signs of avian influenza infection in animals are not unique to avian flu and could be due to another condition. Early detection of suspect cases will improve your ability to respond to and contain any cases of avian flu in your animals. Daily observations and regular communications with your attending veterinarian are the keys to successful and early detection and response. This includes monitoring for signs of illness and death in your animals, as well as any unusual sickness or death in wild animals on or around your facility. You should immediately contact your veterinarian if you suspect avian flu in your animals or in wild animals on the premises or wherever your animals may be housed. There are a number of common clinical signs seen in poultry and other birds that you should include in your daily observations. These include sudden death without any prior signs of illness, decreased energy and appetite, and changes in egg production or quality. You may see swelling and or purple discoloration of the eyelids, comb, wattles, and legs, or respiratory signs such as gasping for air, nasal discharge, coughing, or sneezing. There can also be neurologic signs such as twisting of the head and neck and stumbling or falling down. You may also see diarrhea. Signs of avian flu in dairy cows can be generalized, such as lethargy, dehydration, and fever. The most common reported symptoms in dairy cattle include decreased food intake, decreased rumination, and decreased milk production. Tacky or loose feces can be a sign of avian flu in dairy cattle, particularly if other suggestive signs are also present. 
Respiratory signs may include clear nasal discharge, increased respiratory rate, or labored breathing. Some infected dairy cattle exhibit decreased milk production and produced milk that is thicker and yellow in coloration, more closely resembling the appearance of colostrum. Clinical signs to watch for in cats that live at or have access to the petting zoo area, such as feral cats, include lethargy, unusual inactivity, fever, trouble breathing, nasal discharge, walking abnormally or walking in circles, and sudden death. A communication plan should be in place between the facility and the attending veterinarian to respond quickly to any suspected cases of influenza-like illness in your animals or any unusual wildlife deaths on the premises. Attending veterinarians should be prepared to collaborate with federal and state agencies to implement appropriate actions in response to any suspected or confirmed cases of avian influenza in your animals. In addition to responding to ill animals, attending veterinarians should work with petting zoo facilities or facilities with traveling exhibits containing livestock or poultry to implement measures to minimize the risk of avian flu infection and transmission. This could include developing plans and measures to prevent, detect, and respond to avian flu in a way that works best for your facility. The attending veterinarian should work with facility staff to develop and implement a biosecurity plan to minimize virus spread and a plan for monitoring, testing, and reporting any possible cases of avian flu. Consideration should be given to minimizing virus spread from wildlife to collection animals, between collection animals, and where the public has contact with collection animals, such as public feedings. Traveling animal exhibits should consult with their veterinarian to discuss the risks of traveling petting zoos or public interactions with petting zoo animals, especially if such exhibits include dairy cows, small ruminants, or poultry. Attending veterinarians working with facilities that travel with animals should be familiar with the requirements for interstate movement as well as any state-specific exhibition requirements prior to travel. Biosecurity practices are measures taken to prevent the introduction and spread of harmful organisms such as the avian influenza virus. Because each facility is different, the facility staff and the attending veterinarian should work together to identify which measures or practices might best decrease the risk of avian flu introduction and spread to petting zoo animals, barn or feral cats living on the grounds, the staff, and the public. Some measures that can protect staff working with petting zoo animals include not allowing eating, drinking, or smoking when handling or feeding the animals. Dedicated areas should be established for storing food for staff, as well as dedicated areas for staff to eat, drink, and take breaks. Staff should regularly wash their hands before eating or drinking and after handling animals. Staff should also use personal protective equipment as directed by your attending veterinarian. Finally, encourage your staff to self-report any symptoms of possible influenza to their supervisors and seek appropriate medical care. Good sanitation is part of a good biosecurity plan. Use dedicated equipment, tools, food dishes, and grooming supplies for petting zoo animals. Do not use or share these items with other collection animals or exhibits unless your attending veterinarian has approved a disinfection plan. Measures to limit access and exposure to wild waterfowl, songbirds, and shorebirds will help limit introduction of avian flu to petting zoo animals. Special attention should be given to limiting any access of petting zoo animals to nearby ponds or lakes used by wild birds. When possible, house animals indoors. Limit access of wild birds to animal food and other water sources. And consider temporarily halting any commingling of poultry and petting zoo mammals. This may include free roaming facility birds such as peafowl or guinea fowl. Do not feed raw, unpasteurized milk to your animals, especially domestic cats. And we encourage you to work with your attending veterinarian regarding the acquisition of new animals, 
as well as any movement of animals either on or off site. This is especially true if you have a mobile petting zoo and for any movements of dairy cattle and birds from one state to another. For both petting zoos and traveling exhibits, if there is a high risk or suspicion of avian flu in your area or facility, we strongly encourage you to work with your attending veterinarian to employ measures to keep the public safe. This could include temporarily limiting public access or closing the petting zoo, temporarily stopping traveling exhibits, minimizing or stopping any public interactions with petting zoo animals, and not having any milk the cow type exhibits. We recommend discouraging guests from eating, drinking, or smoking while in the petting zoo area. Lastly, sick animals should be immediately removed from public contact and isolated from unaffected animals. Additional measures may include considering the use of different staffing policies to minimize spread. For example, if the petting zoo caretakers also service other animals in areas, you may want to limit this and have staff only care for petting zoo animals. Similarly, staff may need to limit their contact with poultry and other farm animals housed at other locations. It may also be wise to monitor your local area through news outlets and various websites to know if avian flu has been detected nearby and implement any additional biosecurity measures as necessary. This is a rapidly evolving situation. Facility owners, managers, and attending veterinarians are encouraged to use the USDA avian influenza website for current information and requirements, answers to frequently asked questions, fact sheets, and links to directories for other state and federal officials. This QR code can be used to link directly to the USDA avian influenza website. If you have additional questions, please contact your USDA inspector, USDA area veterinarian in charge, or state animal health or public health officials. In conclusion, we hope this video has provided key points to protect your animals, staff, and the general public against possible avian flu infections within petting zoos. Remember that a variety of species are at risk of infection and there are many potential routes of transmission. Knowing what signs to look for during daily observations and reporting those to your attending veterinarian will minimize the risk of disease transmission. Biosecurity measures are the key to reducing disease risks. Finally, communication and collaboration between petting zoo staff, attending veterinarians, and state and federal animal and public health officials is extremely important and necessary. Thank you for your time.